Thank you very much. Asante sana. I really appreciate. Nina shukuru sana. The servant of the Lord. Na shukuru sana mtumishi wa Bwana. For what he has done. Kwa kile ambacho amekifanya. I'm so humbled that I'm standing again before you once again. Na nimenyenyekezwa sana kusimama mbele zenu jioni hii. May I also salute the ministers who have come here. Naweza pia kuwasalimu wahudumu ambao wamekuja hapa. I say I salute you soldiers of the cross in Jesus Christ's name. Na wasalimu wenye askari wa msalaba kwa jina la Yesu Kristo. Together with my fellow soldiers in my team we came with. Pa pamoja na maaskari wenzangu hapa, ndugu zangu wa shirika tulokuja nao. And every servant of the Lord. Na kila mtumishi wa Bwana. You can sit at the one. Ah mnaweza kuketi kwa muda. I salute you servant of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Na wasalimu nyote watumishi wa Mungu kwa jina lenye nguvu la Yesu Kristo. No choosing to be a servant. Unajua kuchagua kuwa mtumishi it's not an easy thing. Si jambo jepesi. There is a difference between a servant and a king. Kuna tofauti kati ya mtumishi na mfalme. Because a servant is the one who labors. Kwa sababu mtumishi ndio yule anayetabika. He doesn't get tired. Hachoki. Even at night, hata usiku, if there are visitors who comes at home, kama kuna wageni wanaokuja nyumbani, they will always send the servant. Ah, mara zote watamtuma mfanyakazi. There is no night or day for a servant. Hakuna usiku wala mchana kwa mtumishi. Because he's a servant. Kwa sababu yeye ni mtumishi. It's that servant who serves the people. Ni huyo mtumishi anayetumikia watu wengine. But for the king, lakini kwa mfalme, the people are the one who serves the king. Watu ndio hao wanaomtumikia mfalme. He who is just seated is asleep, people are serving. Yeye amekaa, amelala na watu ndio wanaomtumikia. Just like Tanzania. Kama tu vile hapa ilivyo Tanzania. You know, Tanzania is very hot. Najua hapa Tanzania ni joto kuli kweli. This is my first experience. Na huu ni uzoefu wangu wa kwanza. I think it must be five times hotter than in Lusaka. Inawezekana ikawa ni joto mara tano zaidi ya vile ilivyo kule Lusaka. So if there's a, a king here. Kwa hiyo kama kuna mfalme hapa he was supposed to have someone standing beside him. To bring fresh air to the king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's the difference with the king and the servant. So these are the servants of the people. If you can look at what a servant goes through in the natural you understand what a servant goes through in the spiritual because the people you are serving they will be asleep at night but the servant will be there to protect them praying for them standing in between the enemies and those people you are looking after Simama katikati ya adui na hao watu anao wachunga. And you know what demons does? Na mnajua mapepo yanafanya nini? Jesus said, Yesu alisema, when you go to destroy the strong man's house. Unapoenda kuharibu nyumba ya mtu mwenye nguvu, if a certain man is bound, kama mtu fulani amefungwa, for you to loosen the man who is bound, kwa wewe ili wewe umfungue ile mtu aliyefungwa, you have to check on the person that bound that person. Inakubidi kumwangalia huyo mtu aliyemfunga huyo mtu uleta kufungua. Ndipo inakubidi kumshinda huyo mtu. That's when you will free the captive. Hapo ndipo unaweza kumweka huru yule mateka. So now how many people has been bound? Sasa ni watu wengi jinsi gani waliofungwa? And how many people has been loosened? Na ni wangapi waliofunguliwa? So do you think those demons are happy? Eti unafikiri hao mapepo wanafuraha? The one standing in between the prisoner and those enemies has to be affected. Yule anayesimama katikati ya wale wafungwa na adui inabidi akimbwe. So when you are free, kwa hiyo unapokuwa huru, that demon is unhappy. Huyo pepo aliyokuwa amekufunga hayuko hana furaha. It will fight the man who has come to release you. Yes. Huyo pepo atamshambulia yule mtu aliyekuja kukufungua. If the man is so strong, kama huyo mtu ana nguvu sana, 
the demon will follow the wife. Ah, you are people who are fat and kewe. If the wife she's so strong, kama mkewe ana nguvu zaidi na yeye. Then the demon will follow the children. Ndipo mapepo yatafuata watoto. That's why you find that the, most of the children from the servant of the Lord they are in problems. Yes. Hapo ndipo utaona kwamba watoto wengi wa watumishi wa Mungu wapo kwenye shida. Then people Again, he rises and says the children to the pastors are a problem. Now, what they are going to do is say that the children are going to be a problem. But they are forgetting that it is their demons which are attacking those children. But they are going to say that the people who are going to be a problem are going to be a problem. That's how it is. You are holding so many souls. The Bible says, Obey them that have rule over you. Obey them with double honor for they watch over your souls. So there must be someone a mediator. Standing between you and the enemy. Just like Jesus Christ was a mediator between an angry God and a sinful man. He accepted the substitute. We were supposed to die instead of him. But him a righteous man came to stand as a mediator standing on behalf of your sinful nature. And Jesus said, Father, let me die on behalf of these people. So there was an exchange. He gave us Righteousness and internal life, and he also took our sins. Because 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, You know sin, yet he became sin for the sake of us. All what he did. It was for the sake of us. That's why the priest came to mock him. That was a mistake which the priest made. He said he saved the others. Here he is, why can't he save himself? If he had to save himself, then the others would be lost. That's why he sent the others in order for his soul to be lost. And the Bible says, He that keeps his soul shall lose it. But he that loses his soul for the sake of mine, he shall find it. May God richly bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for you, the saints of the living God. We are called preachers because of you. A teacher cannot be a teacher without the students. Those are the students who make him to be a teacher. Just like without water, we are not going to have fish. It's no wonder God created the water in order for the fish to come and swim in the water. And the life of the fish is in the water. When you remove the fish from the water, then the fish dies. For so it to be kept alive, it has to be taken back to the water. The same way before God created the flowers, botany life. 
he had to create the soil. So that when flowers come, they have to grow in the soil. And the life of the flowers is in the soil. When you pluck them out, you uproot them. Then they wither away. For them to be alive, they have to be taken back to the soil. Then you will see them glowing. In the same way the life of a human being is with God. Because a human being is part of God. For you and me to be alive, we have to go back to God. Because there is only one form of internal life. And that's God, the word of God. And when we depart from the word of God, we are dead. Except we go back. Then we have life internally. That's why John 5, 24 says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word, and believeth for him that sent me, has everlasting life. He shall not come to condemnation. For he has passed from death to life. We need the word of God for us to be alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Last time I stood here, I was trying to show William Branham being a type of Malachi. Yes. We just say Malachi 4, 5, and 6. Tunasema Malachi 4, 5, and 6. And Brother Branham said, Behold, God shall send Malachi. So how does William Branham type himself to Malachi? Those are the things we are trying to talk about on Wednesday. I just want to summarize a bit before I go to the main topic. We said William Branham is the last prophet to the Gentiles. And that's the word of God. Malachi, the last prophet to the Jews. And William Branham, the last prophet to the Gentiles. We talked about the mathematics of the Bible. Is so perfect. And Brother Branham said, I teach in nature. I'm a man without education. But I am a typologist. Type and shadows does not fail. Just like you can see the shadow of a human being, you cannot expect an animal to come through. Because that shadow belongs to a human being. So Brother Branham was trying to bring the types and shadows. And, and he said without understanding the mathematics of the Bible, then the whole thing is messed up. Hallelujah. 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 Pay much attention to what we are going to say here. Malachi. Malachi. Five is seven letters. Ni helufi saba. Amen. William Branham. Amen. William Branham. Seven letters. Helufi saba. And Malachi is a type of William Branham. Na Malachi ni mfano wa William Branham. When you look at the message of Malachi. Unapoangalia ujumbe wa Malachi. Malachi has spoken about two prophets in the Bible. Malachi amezungumzia kuhusiana na manabii.
There are two prophets mentioned in the book of Malachi. There is a prophet Moses and the prophet Elijah. So Malachi had a revelation about the prophet Moses. Why is Malachi mentioning Moses? Because he had a revelation to go back to the Old Testament. Moses wrote the first five books of the Old Testament. So he mentioned about Moses. Then he mentioned about Elijah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you have the revelation from the beginning of the Bible. You remember anything you see here? They started in Genesis. The true worship started in Genesis. And the deception started in Genesis. Opening started in Genesis. And also true religion started in Genesis. That's the revelation which Malachi had. Because in Genesis, they talk about and they talk about offering. Because offering started in Genesis. On the two children. Cain and Abel. Everyone offered according to his revelation. And death originated in Genesis. We all know accept the offering of Cain. He rejected the offering of Cain. And accepted Abel. And Cain was very lost. Cain killed Abel because of an offering. That was a natural death. We have a spiritual death today. Offering as a spiritual death today. Why? Because it has got a problem. It is so hard for people to understand the revelation which is in the offering. And the devil is fighting the same offering. Because there is a death in the offering. The natural death which took place in the Genesis has come to be a spiritual death in our time. In that offering, there was jealousy. Cain was very jealous to what happened there. That's why he killed Abel. Now in Malachi, God came to talk about the same. When you look at the book of Malachi, when you look at the book of Malachi, God started rebuking the priests. Then he was rebuking all Israel. That's why in Malachi one, the six, he says, "I'm the Lord, and I'll change not." Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That same God. Is the same God today? God was rebuking the priests and the people of Israel. He spoke about the issue of offering in the book of Malachi chapter one. He said the temples of the Lord has become the altar of the Lord has become an abomination. 
Imekuwa machafuko machukizo Why has it become an abomination? Kwa nini imekuwa machukizo? People are bringing detestable things at the altar of the Lord. Ah watu wanaleta vitu visivyo stahili kwenye madhabahu ya Mungu. Because when people were coming to give, kwa sababu watu walipokuwa wakija kutoa, they could give to the priest. Wangetoa kwa makuhani. They the priest who examine the offering which the people bring. Na ndipo wale makuhani wangechunguza ile matoleo Because God always wants something which is blameless. Kwa sababu Mungu mara zote hutaka kitu kisicho na alama. But what the people did? Lakini watu walifanya nini? They brought offering maybe they bring a goat which has no eye. Lakini watu wangeleta dhabihu pengine mbuzi asiye na jicho. They will bring a lamb without a leg. Wangeleta kondoo asiye na mguu. And you offer it to God. Na wakamtolea Mungu huyo kondoo. And God was saying, Na Mungu alikuwa akisema, You are bringing these things to me. Mnaniletea hivi vitu mimi. You are not showing any respect to me. Hamuonyeshi heshima yoyote kwangu mimi. Take that offering to your bosses. Pelekeni matoleo hayo kwa makazi wenu. If those bosses will be pleased with you. Kama hao makazi watafurahishwa na hiyo vitu, can you take a chicken without a head to your boss? Unaweza kupeleka kuku asiye na kichwa kwa bosi wako? Or without a leg? Au asiye na mguu? And you say boss I've given you I've given you a gift you can use it at Christmas. Na kusema bosi nimekuletea huyu kuku unaweza kumtumia katika Christmas. And when you look at the chicken, na anapomtazama yule kuku, it can't move. Hawezi kutembea. And God is saying take it there if your bosses will be pleased with you. Na Mungu anasema hebu mpeleke huyo kuku kama bosi wako atamridhia. Because the condition we have today. Kwa sababu hali tulizonazo leo hii. That's the condition which is our art. Ndizo hali walizokuwa nazo wale watu. That's why William Branham is a type of Malachi. Hiyo ndio sababu William Branham ni mfano wa Malachi. We heard yesterday that people They are being forced just to pay time and offering they are being forced. Tulisikia kwamba watu wamelazimishwa kutoa zaka zao, wamelazimishwa. In that offering and time, katika hayo matoleo pamoja na zaka, God is saying your case. Mungu anasema mmelaaniwa. And you know what a case can do? Na unajua laana inaweza kufanya nini? That case if you die it will remain with your children. Hiyo laana kama wewe unakufa inabaki na watoto wako. It goes from generation to generation. Inatoka kutoka kizazi kimoja kwenda kizazi kingine. Look at Abraham. Mtazame Ibrahim. The Bible says he let me pay the tithe in the land of Abraham. Biblia inasema Lawi alilipa zaka katika viuno vya Ibrahim. And when you look at Levi, na unapomtazama Lawi, he was in the fourth generation. Alikuwa katika kizazi cha Levi. Abraham did it. Kwa hiyo kila Ibrahim alifanya, Levi also did it while he was in the land of Abraham. Lawi pia alifanya alipokuwa katika viuno vya Ibrahim. That's why you find that certain things which are following us. Ndio maana unaweza kuona baadhi ya mambo yanayotufuatilia. Even the demons we are fighting, hata mapepo tunayopambana nayo, that's not our own problem. Hayo sio kwa ajili sio kwa sababu ya matatizo yetu. Hayo tuliarithi tu. They came from our forefathers. Yalikuja kutoka kwa baba zetu waliotutangulia. Now we are paying for what they did. Kwa hiyo sisi tunalipia kile ambacho wao walifanya. And you can only be free when you become a Christian. Na unaweza tu kuwa huru na hayo mapepo unapofanyika mkristo. You are disconnected from that generation and familiar spirits. And ndipo wewe unateganishwa kutoka katika ile mapepo na maroho ya kifamilia. So that the children coming behind you. Kwa hiyo watoto wanaokuja nyuma yako foundation for them. Umeweka msingi kwa ajili yao. That case will never follow them. Hiyo laana haitawafuatilia. That case will die right there. Hiyo laana itakufa papo hapo. That's why we should be Christian born again of the spirit. Hiyo ndio sababu tunapaswa kuwa wakristo waliozaliwa mara ya pili kwa Roho Mtakatifu. So we are saying Malachi. Kwa hiyo tunasema Malaki the revelation of Moses. Alikuwa na ufunuo wa Musa. He also had the revelation of Elijah. Pia alikuwa na ufunuo wa Elia. Moses was the law giver. Na Musa alikuwa ni mtoa sheria. Then Elijah meant justice. Na Elia alimaanisha haki. 
that same problem which was in the beginning, Tabu, shira, ila, 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 kuwa, kuwa, mwanzo, the natural death, mauti ya kawaida, it came to Malachi. Ilikuja kwa Malachi. Because God proclaimed the case. Kwa sababu mungu alitangaza ile shida. So now, brother, brother, Hapsa mungu alitangaza ile laana. Brother, brother, we scored. Malachi, Malachi because he possessed the spirit of Moses. Kwa sababu alikuwa ana roho ya Musa, just like Moses took a nation out of the nation. Kama vile ambavyo Musa alitoa taifa kutoka kwenye taifa, Israel from the land of captivity. Ah, Israel kutoka katika nchi ya utumwa, came from Egypt. Kitoka kutoka Misri, is the same way brother brother we setting in the blind out of the church. Ina na ila ile mdana analitoa the church is coming from the denomination of prison. And out of the denomination of prison, Brother Branham's message, the very exodus is taking us from there. Very then Jesus Christ shall take a bride out of the church. Just like Moses. Moses took people from Egypt. Himself never entered Canaan. Joshua and Caleb ndio walioingia Canaan. Joshua generation. Na Joshua generation. Na kizazi cha Yeshua, Brother Branham took us from the denomination of prison. And Brother Branham alitoa katika gereza la kimadhehebu. Himself did not enter there. Yeye mwenyewe hakuingia hapa. But there is a Joshua generation. Lakini kuna kizazi cha Yeshua shall be perfected by the ministry of the fivefold ministry. Ambacho kitakamilishwa kwa huduma ya zile huduma tano. Which is the Holy Ghost shall perfect in the blind. Ambaye itakuwa ni roho takatifu akilikamilisha bidii yake into Canaan. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we are saying Malachi and the seven letters. And brother Branham had the seven letters. So now the word Malachi. Sasa neno Malachi. It has got the chapter Malachi has got 55 verses. Na tunaona sura ya Malachi ina when you check the book of Malachi, it has 55 verses. And out of the 55 verses, 47 verses, it's God speaking direct to Israel. That's it to the Lord. He will speak this and this direct voice of God to Israel. In 47 verses. We say the how does William Branham relate to Malachi in 47? Brother Branham started his ministry in 1933. You remember when he was baptizing the 17th person at Oyo River? There was an announcement made from the sky. As John the Baptist was sent to follow his first coming, you and your message shall follow his second coming. The ministry of William Branham started in 1933. Because God does not miss. Christ was born. He was announced by angels in Luke chapter 2 from the saints to came. This day in the city of David a savior is born unto you. Leo hii kutoka katika nyumba ya mji wa Daudi mfalme amezaliwa kwa ajili yenu. Those there 
Josué announcing that to the shepherd at Bethlehem. Hao walikuwa ni malaika wakitangaza kwa wachungaji waliokuwa kule Bethlehem. Jesus was born. Yesu Kristo alizaliwa. Apart from going to Jerusalem at 12 years. Ah mbali tu na kwenda Yerusalemu katika umri wa miaka 12. Jesus was quiet until 30 years. Yesu alikuwa kimya mpaka alipofikisha miaka 30. Jesus was quiet he could not do anything until he came to the age of faith. Na Yesu alikuwa kimya hakufanya au kusikia chochote au kusikia kwa chochote mpaka umri wa miaka 30. At 30 years. Katika umri wa miaka 30 Jesus grew in wisdom and stature. Yesu alikuwa katika hekima na kimo. In favor of God and man. Akimpeleza Mungu pamoja na wanadamu. Katika umri wa miaka tu 12 he started the ministry. Ah, sasa alianza huduma yake. There was a prophet to announce him, to introduce him to the world. Alikuwa kwa nabii wa kumtangaza kwa ulimwengu. At first he was announced Ah, pale mwanzoni alitangazwa after 30 years he was introduced. Ah, kwa mia, baada ya miaka 30 alitambulishwa. Those are the mathematics we are trying to make because God does not fail. Haya ndio mahisabati tunajaribu kuyafanya kwa sababu Mungu hashindwi. And when it came to the prophet William Branham. Na ilipokuja kwa nabii William Branham in 1933. Katika mwaka wa 33 there was an announcement at Oyo River. Kulikuwa na tangazo katika mto And after 1933 to 1963 na kuanzia mwaka 33 mpaka mwaka 53 Jesus Christ fell to earth there Yesu Kristo miaka 30 pale William Branham fell to earth also William Branham miaka 30 pia Jesus Christ 
close in the book. Because it was not him to come and execute judgment. But there must be the message of Malachi 4. Behold, I will send you the prophet Elijah. God spoke to Malachi. How does that relate to William Branham? William Branham. William Branham started preaching in 
cross. Ilikuwa ni farasi weusi. Government and religion. Dini pamoja na siasa. We are taken together. Ziliunganishwa pamoja. The Antichrist controlled the government and the religion. Ah, yule piga Kristo alitawala serikali pamoja na dini. God gave the cherubim which was the wisdom of a man. Ah, Mungu alitoa kerubi ambayo ilikuwa ni hekima ya mwanadamu. And that was in the dark age. Na hiyo ilikuwa ni katika nyakati za giza was almost done away. Uli, ujumba ulikuwa karibia umeisha. But believers still stood with the wisdom of a man. Lakini waaminiyo bado walisimama kwa hekima ya mwanadamu. Now in the last age. Sasa katika wakati wa mwisho. God has said I has raised another standard. Mungu ameinua kiwango kingine. Out from the previous standard. Kutoka katika viwango hivi vingine. Because the first standard walked on the earth. Kwa sababu kiwango cha kwanza kilitembea hapa juu ya nchi. And it fed the children from you. It fed the children from you. Na iliwalisha watoto. Ah, nayo iliwalisha watoto kupitia maziwa. Also a cow moves on the earth. Pia ndama anatembea hapa duniani. And the cow feeds the children from you. Na nyama tembo eh. Ngombe ananyonyesha watoto wake maziwa.
Ariana! Imani! Ariana Imani kwa wale watu wanne. Because all those so many were looking down. Sababu wale watu wanne walikuwa wakitazama chini. Sia they are friend you be delivered. Wana jinsi rafiki yao wangefunguliwa. Watu waliamini kwamba Yesu angeweza kuponya namna zote za magonjwa na maradhi. But when it comes to forgiveness, he cannot forgive its blasphemy. Lakini inapokuja kusamehe dhambi asiyeweza kwa sababu huko ni kukufuru. And in Bible plan we say, na Bible wanasema in the message the Roman nobleman, katika ujumbe is saying the devil has my best it. Katika ujumbe akida wa Kirumi, he says The devil has my severe those things. Ah shetani ameyapindua hayo mambo juu juu. As we are living in a scientific world. Kwa sababu sisi tunaishi katika ulimwengu wa kisayansi. The devil has turned down the situation. Kwa hiyo shetani amepindua mambo juu chini. He is telling people. Anawaambia watu, Jesus can forgive sins. Yesu anaweza kusamehe dhambi. In the past he was telling them Jesus can heal but he cannot forgive. Zamani alikuwa anawaambia Yesu anaweza kuponya hiyo hawezi kusamehe. But in our day lakini katika kizazi to say Jesus can forgive. Amekuja kusema Yesu anaweza kusamehe. But when it comes to healing, lakini anapokuja kwenye uponyaji, go to the hospital. Nendeni na hospitali. wakae nyumbani kwa sababu kichwa kinauma they say i can't go to church because i've got headache wanasema siwezi kwenda kanisani kwa sababu kichwa kinagonga if they knew that jesus is a healer kama wangejua kwamba yesu ni mpoyaji they would have gone if it is to die they would have died in the church wangeenda kama ni kufa wakafia huko kanisani because the devil has changed life sasa shetani amebadilisha hilo jambo he's telling them that jesus can forgive you anawaambia yesu But he cannot heal you. Lakini hawezi kuwaponya. Haleluya. Haleluya. It's all Satan working. Yes, Huyo ni shetani akitenda kazi. So Jesus said your sins are forgiven. Kwa hiyo Yesu alisema dhambi zako zimesamehewa. Then he said rise up. Ndipo akasema anka. Take your bed. Jichukua kitanda chako. And go. Na uende zako. And the person you add to to rise up and go immediately. Na hiyo mtu ilibidi kuamka na kuondoka upesi. Why? Kwanza because of the four men here. Kwa sababu ya hao watu wanne hapa. From the fourth it was a total deliverance. Ilikuwa ni ukombozi mkamilifu. Two is the witness. Jambo la pili ni ushahidi. And the three number one. Eh eh jambo la kwanza ilikuwa ni watu wanne, la pili ni ushuhuda. And the three is perfection. Ah Okay, Watu wanne wanawakilisha ukombozi mkamilifu, watu wawili wanawakilisha ushahidi na tatu inawakilisha ukamilifu. So I'm trying to tell you brother Branham is not the fake messenger. Kwa hiyo najaribu kuonyesha ndugu Branham sio mjumbe wa tatu. Brother Branham is on the fourth messenger. Ndugu Branham ni mjumbe wa nne. We are trying to break down the 47 here. Tunajaribu kuivunja vunja hii ya 47. So that you understand the mathematics of the bible ili kwamba muweze kuelewa mahisabati ya biblia i god allowed the message to start in 1947 eh mtaelewa kwa nini mungu aliruhusu ujumbe waanze kurekodiwa mwaka 47 so we are saying for here it's william brana kwa hiyo tunasema nne hapa ni william brana when you check in the bible unapochunguza kwenye biblia isaiah preached about william brana isaiah alihubiri juu ya william brana in the book of isaiah Na kifungu cha 14 hapa This is William Branham here. Huyu ni William Branham. We shall explain how is William Branham. Tutaelezeni jinsi gani hii ni William Branham. Yes. We talk about Lazarus. Tuna tulizungumza kuhusu Lazarus. When Lazarus was sick. Wakati Lazarus alipokuwa anaumwa. They sent the message to Jesus Christ. Walituma ujumbe kwa Yesu Kristo. And Jesus did not go. Na Yesu hakuja. Until Lazarus died. Mpaka Lazarus alipokufa. And when he was dead. Na alipokufa. On the first day Jesus 
could not go there. Siku ya kwanza Yesu asingeenda. On the second he could not go there. Na siku ya pili asingeenda pia. On the third Jesus could not go there. Na siku ya tatu asingeenda. On the fourth day Jesus stepped up. Katika siku ya nne alienda. When Lazarus was a dead man. Wakati Lazarus alipokuwa amekufa. Corruption had set in. Uharibifu ulikuwa umeshaingia. Lazarus was rotten. Lazarus alikuwa ameoza. And the sister said. Na dada yake alisema Waliishi pamoja Martha, Mariam, Lazaro na Yesu Kristo. And Jesus was the blood winner in that family. Na Yesu alikuwa na Ah, alikuwa ndio mleta riziki katika ile nyumba. He was making sofas people buying and he could provide for that house. Alikuwa anatengeneza masofa na watu wanadunua wanapata hela kwa ajili ya kuendesha mahitaji yao. Can you imagine that they lived with the Messiah but they never knew who he was? Unaweza kuwazia waliishi na Masihi lakini hawakujua alikuwa ni nani. You can be living with the, the Messiah without knowing who he is. Unaweza ukawa ukiishi na Masihi bila kujua yeye ni nani. That's why many people don't know what a revelation is. Yeye ndiye sababu watu wengi hawajui ufunuo ni kitu gani. They think they worship God in heaven. Wanafikiri wanamwabudu Mungu aliye mbinguni. No God is not in heaven. Hapana Mungu hayuko mbinguni. God is in a man. And Jesus 
All power was given to him in heaven and on earth. Na Yesu mamlaka yote mbinguni na duniani ilipewa kwake. He was the creator of everything. Alikuwa ni muumbaji wa kila kitu. If, if, if he wanted he could have said let there be. Kama angetaka angesema na iwe. But he never said that. Lakini hakusema hivyo kamwe. He said do you believe that I can do this thing? Yes. Alisema eti nyie mnaamini kwamba naweza kufanya hivi kwa ajili yenu? And they said yes Lord we believe. Na wakasema nam bwana tunaamini. And in his prayer, na katika maombi yake, he never said according to my faith as Jesus. Hakusema kulingana na imani yangu mimi kama Yesu. No he said according to your faith. Alisema kulingana na imani yenu. Let it be done to you. Na itendeke kwenu. So if you cannot get you. Kwa hiyo kama hautaponywa, it's not the problem of the pastor. Sio shida ya mchungaji than with Jesus Christ. Yaani watu wanajisikia vizuri kuwa na mapepo kuliko kuwa na Yesu. That's how it is. Hivyo ndivyo ilivyo. Because if you feel better with Jesus Christ you will surrender yourself. Kama unajisikia vizuri kuwa na Yesu utajisalimisha kwake. So when Jesus went to the house of Mary. Kwa hiyo Yesu alipoenda katika nyumba ya Mariamu. He said where have you laid him? Akasema mmemweka wapi? Remember he went on the fourth day. Kumbuka alienda siku ya 4. Mary said he is rotten now he is stinking. Na walisema ameoza na ananuka. He said I, I told you if you are going if you believe you are going to see the power of God. Niliwaambiani kama mtaamini mtaenda kuona uwezo wa Mungu. And Jesus went to the grave. Na Yesu alienda kaburini. He lifted up his eyes above the floor. Aliinua macho yake kuelekea kiti cha enzi. Just look what is Hebu angalia maombi yake. He was asking God to do something which is impossible. Alikuwa anamwomba Mungu afanye jambo fulani ambalo linawezekana. Because the man passed three days. Kwa sababu huyu mtu alivuka siku tatu. He went into corruption. Samani aliomba kwa baba jambo lisilowezekana kwa sababu huyu mtu alishavuka siku tatu ambazo mwili unaharibika. He said father we are praying. Alisema baba niko hapa naomba not for my sake. Si kwa ajili yangu mimi. For the sake of these people who are standing here. Lakini kwa ajili ya hao watu waliosimama hapa. I pray that you may hear me. Naomba kwamba wewe unisikie. And he specified the person he wanted to resurrect. Yes. Na aliainisha moja kwa moja ni aina gani ya mtu anayetaka afufuke. If he just said dead people resurrect. Kama tu angesema wafufukeni au wafufukeni even he can follow. Hata kaini follow wakena. Na wao wangefufuka. They would have resurrected. Wangefufuka but he specified. Lakini ali ali nyoshia maalum. Lazarus akasema
They are the one to go in rapture. Because the seven of church age, there is no another age outside this. So Nebuchadnezzar prepared the furnace seven times. And after preparing the furnace seven times, he provoked God in heaven. Tell the people of where you come. 
kamfo waambie watu juu ya kule unatoka tell those lemon people those blind men because blindness is a demon waambie watu vipofu na kadhalika kwa sababu upofu ni pepo tell them to say where i come from waambie kwamba mahali ninapotoka you cannot be a blind man huwezi kuwa mtu mwenye upofu tena because that lady said there kwa sababu huyo mwanamke alisema pale when she saw naman alipomwona naman she said Huyu mtu hawezi kuendelea kuwa mwenye ukoma. That was just a simple age speaking. Huyu alikuwa tu ni mwanamke wa kawaida akisema. Because I know that God is in Israel. Kwa sababu najua Mungu yuko kula Israel. And we have a prophet Elisha in Israel. Nasi tuna nabii Elisha kula Israel. And when the king heard about that. Na wakati mfalme aliposikia kuhusu hilo, the king believed the word of a simple lady. Mfalme aliamini neno la yule dada wa He not even a letter. Akaandika hata barua. To the king of Israel. Kwa mfalme wa Israeli. I have sent Naaman that you should cure him from leprosy. Nimemtuma Naaman ili umponye na huo ukoma. And when the king saw the letter. Na mfalme alipoona ile barua. He tore his clothes. Akarua mavazi yake. Why God that I should finish this? Am I God that I should finish his problem? Akwamba mimi ni Mungu ambaye ili hata niweze kutatua shida hii. I know you just want war with us. Najua kwamba yeye mnataka vita na sisi. So just prepare for war with this man. Kwa hiyo sasa andaa vita pamoja na huyu mtu. Then the prophet Elisha heard. Ndipo nabii Elisha akasikia hiyo. And why is the king tearing his clothes? Akasema kwa nini huyu mfalme amelarua mavazi yake? Send him to me here. Na wale tu waliona upendo wa 
kiungu mkamilifu ndio wataingia ile ngamo ya pili aingi the on top of the roof akawaficha juu ya dani and they revealed the mystery to her na walimfunulia siri we are going to destroy tunaenda kuangamiza yes. We have come to destroy you. Tumekuja kuangamiza Yeriko. And she begged. Na aliwasi. When you are destroyed. Wakati mnapoangamiza spare me and my family. Tafadhali mnistiri mimi na familia yangu. And I don't know if it was Joshua talking. Na sikujua kama ilikuwa ni Joshua aliyekuwa akiongea. He said we shall spare you. Wakasema tutakuhifadhi wewe. Just after you are going to heed to our instructions. Ka, eh, kama tu utazingatia maelekezo yetu. When you take the clothes and take it outside the window the leg clothes with stripes put it outside the window. Eh, kama utachukua kitambaa chekundu na kipininiliza juu ile kule nilishani. When that cloth is seen there wakati ile kama nyekundu itakapoonekana pale your life will be spared. Maisha yako yataifadhiwa. Who was giving instruction? Nani alikuwa anatoa maelekezo? Was it God? Ilikuwa ni Mungu? It was a human being. Ilikuwa ni mwanadamu? Kenny Rahab. Aki Akimwambia Rahab. Why don't you get instruction from people? Kwa nini ninyi hamtaki kupata maelekezo kutoka kwa hao watu? Ili that believe of you. Yeye atakaye waamini nyie. Believe of me. Ananiamini mimi. And ili that believe of me. Na yeye ananiamini mimi. Ili believe of him that sent me. Anamwamini yeye aliyenituma. The one talking was a human being. Aliyekuwa anazungumza alikuwa ni mwanadamu. Now who came to destroy? Was it a human being? No. Sasa nani aliyekuja kuangamiza alikuwa ni mwanadamu? No. It was not that human being. Haikuwa yule mwanadamu aliyeongea. It was God himself. Ilikuwa ni Mungu mwenyewe. And when he was destroying. Na wakati alikuwa anaangamiza. He spared the lab. Alimuhifadhi hai yule Rahab. She obeyed the voice of a human being. Kwa sababu alitii sauti ya mwanadamu. If you obey the voice of a human being. Kama utatii sauti ya mwanadamu Ni Mungu gani huyo anayeenda kanisani kila siku? He's a preacher man. Ni huyo mtu mhubiri. When he stands here at the pulpit, anaposimama hapa kwenye madhabahu, is no longer a man. Sio mwanadamu tena. When you are bringing your children for dedication, mnapoleta watoto wenu kuwaweka wakfu, what do you say? Mnasemaje? We want God to dedicate our children. Tunataka Mungu awaweke wakfu watoto wetu. So God is in a man when dedicating your children. Kwa hiyo Mungu yuko ndani ya mtu anapowaweka watoto wako wakfu. When it comes to pay tithe and offering it's not God it's a human being. Sasa inapokuja kulipa zaka na sadaka tena amekuwa sio Mungu ndani ya mtu. Hivyo ndio tunavyofanya. When you want your children to be prayed for. Unapotaka watoto wako waombewe. You are taking it to God. Unawapeleka kwa Mungu. When you have a problem Mungu anajibu kupitia mchungaji. When it comes to give and support the work of God, inapokuja kwenye kutoa na kuunga mkono kazi ya Mungu, no you are the Lord. Ah yeye anazo vingi. Ah I cannot give. Ah siwezi kumpatia. Sheikh. Hallelujah. That's the problem with the people. Hiyo ndio shida watu walionayo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. William Branham. William Branham. He came as the seven. Alikuja kama wa saba. So now this seven day. Sasa hii saba hapa, here it's William Branham. Hapa kwenye nne ni William Branham. Hapo ndipo bara si it's William Branham. Ukombozi mkamilifu na hapa ni William Branham. And now brother Branham was saying this. Sasa ndo Branham alikuwa anasema hivi. The message is saying the mathematics of the Bible are so perfect. Kat, anasema katika ujumbe hisabu za Mungu ni kamilifu sana. When you take 2 plus 4 He saying it gives you six. Anaposema unapochukua mbili ukijumlisha nne unapata sita. So now here he puts an additional here. Sasa anaweka alama ya kujumlisha hapa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Four plus seven is equal to nne ukijumlisha saba inakuwa sawa na ngapi? The eleven for our workers. Wafanyakazi wa saa 11. Hallelujah. The message of William Branham. Ujumbe wa William Branham is producing the 11 hour workers. Unazaa watenda kazi wa saa 11 jioni. The gentle workers who are coming to receive the same pay like 
like the egg church. Ah, wafanya kazi wanaopokea ujira hula hula ambao kanisa la kwanza lilipokea. Have you seen how the mathematics is running? Six is the number of persecution. Tribulation. Sita ni namba ya mateso au vikiku. John chapter 6. Yohana sura ya 6. Verse 6 to 6. Mstari wa 6 The Bible says, Biblia inasema they went out away from the son of man. Waliondoka kutoka kwa mwana wa Adam. Who are these? Ni wakina nani hawa? The 70 disciples. Wanafunzi 70. So these 70 disciples walked no more with him. Kwa hiyo hawa wanafunzi 70 hawakuandamana naye tena. Because they failed to believe this way. Kwa sababu walishindwa kuamini neno lake. They went to the 666. Walienda kwenye 666. Do you see that this is 666? <laughs> and Isaiah here in Isaiah chapter 7, I said chapter 7 verse 14. The Bible says a virgin shall conceive. And he shall bear a son. If it is chapter 14 verse 7 or chapter 7 verse 14. He shall bear a son and you shall call his name Emmanuel. Ah, inasema kwamba bikira ata zamana na eri tamuita jina lake Emmanuel. Who is this virgin? Uye bikira ni nani? We all know that virgin is Mary. Tunajua wote kwamba uye bikira ni Maria. But this virgin is the church. Lakini uye bikira yuko kanisani. And that messenger speaking to Mary was Gabriel. Na uye malaika aliezu mjumbe aliezu mza na Mariamu alikuwa ni Gabrieli. He spoke the word and a child was formed in the womb. Ali nena neno na mwana akaumbika tumboni. That messenger Gabriel. You have Jumbe Gabriel. We have the messenger Gabriel William Branham. Tunaye Jumbe Gabriel William Branham. He speaks his word. Ana nena neno wake. Then the child should be formed in the church. Ndipo mwana lazima aumbike ndani ya kanisa. The church should bear a child. Kanisa lazima lizae mwana. And that child is Jesus the word. Na huyo mwana ni Yesu neno. So when you talk about seven years, how many seven are in 14? Kuna saba ngapi ndani ya 14? There are two seven. Kuna saba mbili. The other one is for William. Moja ni kwa William Brana. The other one is for Marion. Na saba nyingine ni kwa Marion. The other one is for Brana. Na nyingine ni kwa Brana. Because there are three seven here. Kwa sababu kuna saba tatu wa William Brana seven. William, William Eruki Saba. Marion seven. Marion Eruki Saba. And Brana seven. Na Brana Eruki Saba. So William Brana in Isaiah here. Kwa William Brana katika Isaiah hapa. Meaning the message should produce a son. Ikimarisha ujumbe lazima uzae mwana. In Matthew 25, katika matayo 25, you know Matthew is talking about a blind, a wise virgin. Unajua matayo inazumumza kusiana na wanawari mwelevu. A wise virgin. Bibe mwanamwari mwelevu. Wanawari mwelevu. Mwana 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 Ah, mwanamwari mwenye busara atakuwa na mafuta. And who are those virgin? Na wale wasio na busara. Brana Brana we say, Brana wanasema 2 plus 5, 2 kimisha 5 is equal to Sawa sawa na ngapi? It's the seven church ages believers. Ni waamini wa wakati wa saba wa kanisa. They are the one who should have a spare oil as the wise virgin. Ndio hao wanapaswa wawe na mafuta ya akiba kama mwanamwari mwenye busara because six is tribulation kwa sababu sita ni dhiki kuu Matthew 24 years Matayo 24 hapa there's only a foolish virgin here kuna mwanamwari mpumbavu hapa even that foolish virgin who fell became in Matthew 24 in tribulation hata huyo mwanamwari mpumbavu aliyeshindwa aliangukia katika dhiki kuu hapa kwenye Matayo 24 when you read Matthew 24 it's talking about tribulations ukisoma Matayo why? Because Matthew 24, 2 plus 4, it will give you 6. 6 is the number of tribulations. 
And there is no blood in Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May I read a single scripture here? In the book of Acts chapter 15. Let's go to Acts. Acts chapter 15 verse 21. Matendo ya mitume kuminatano ishirini na moja. For Moses of old time has in every city them that preach him been led in the synagogues every Sabbath day. Kwa maana tangu zamani za kare, Musa anao watu wa hubirio mambo yake katika kila mji husomwa kila sabato katika masinagogi. So the Bible in Acti, James is saying, Moses of old time, Musa wakale. he had the people reading him in every city in the synagogues. Why do we fail to read the message of William Brown? If Moses of the old time, people could read him in every city and villages. This one you see here was given to Israel. But God gave William Branham to the Gentiles. Whether you like it or not, William Branham is our Elijah taking us back to the top of our family. And the man had a greater revelation. That's why Paul said, we prophesy in part. And we know it just in part. When that which is perfect shall come, which is in part shall be done away. And William Branham had a great revelation. Now William Branham had a revelation of going back to Pentecost as the spirit of Elijah. He had the three great ministries. The ministry of Moses, the coming out. That's why Moses is found in Malachi there. The third exodus. He had the ministry of Elijah. The ministry of judgment. This message is judgment. You accept it, you are saved from judgment. You deny it, you are a dead person no matter where you go. Because judgment, two things appeared on the Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus got three earthly witnesses. They were also three heavenly witnesses. Heavenly witnesses, one of them was Elijah. Elijah stood for justice. You and me, we don't need justice because we are sinners. There came Moses, meaning the law. And the law was a punishment. Which had no element. But in between them there was a grace. Not what he have done. Not what he have done. But through his grace. Now what we are in class 
Jesus. And why, why Peter was yet speaking? God never wanted the the law. Mungu hakuitaji torati. He never wanted the justice. Wala hakuitaji haki. That's why he, he hindered people, Peter from speaking. Hiyo ndio sababu alimzuia Petro asiendelee kuongea. Why he was yet speaking? Wakati alikuwa akiendelea kunena. God said this is my beloved son. Mungu alisema huyu ni mwanangu mpendwa. Who I am well pleased. Ninayependezwa naye. Here ye him. Msikieni yeye. It's now grace not the law and the justice. Sasa nizamu ya neema sio torati wala haki. He told them to say it's now grace. Aliwaambia kwamba sasa ni neema. And Jesus came with the message of grace. Na Yesu alikuja na ujumbe wa neema. He had three or three witnesses. Alikuwa na mashahidi watatu wa duniani. Peter, Petro, standing for faith. Akisimama kwa ajili ya imani. James, Yakobo, standing for hope. Akisimama kwa ajili ya tumaini. And John standing for love. Na Yohana akisimama akisimama kwa ajili ya upendo. These three things are required in the life of a believer to die. Haya mambo matatu yanahitajika katika maisha ya muaminio. Because faith is the foundation of all those virtues. Kwa sababu imani ndio msingi wa yale mambo mengine juu. And when you believe you must have the hope of your salvation. Na unapoamini inabidi uwe na tumaini la wokovu wako. Then you follow the love of God. Ndipo kupitia upendo wa Mungu. That is the power of love. Wewe upendo wa agape. Ah you go to heaven with a power perfect. Oh unaenda mbinguni ukiwa na upendo mkamilifu wa agape. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So William Branham. Kwa hiyo William Branham he came as a messenger to the Laodicean. Alikuja kama mjumbe wa Laodikia. So you have known that the prophet William Branham is our Malachi. Kwa hiyo umeshajua kwamba eh Malachi William Branham ndio Malachi wetu. So what happened in Malachi? Kwa hiyo kilichotokea katika Malachi is what happening today. Ndio hicho kinachotokea leo. So in conclusion, kwa hiyo katika kumalizia if a change cannot abide by what Malachi was doing. Kwa hiyo kama kanisa haliwezi kudumu na yale Malachi aliyokuwa akifanya. Look what happened in Malachi. Angalia kile kilichotokea katika Malachi. People stopped paying tithe and offering. Watu walikoma kutoa zaka na sadaka. And God was quiet. Na Mungu alikuwa kimya. Because they were cursed. Kwa sababu walikuwa wamelaaniwa. So if you go if people cannot do what God is saying no matter how many times you are going to repent you are going to be prayed for no pray for me my business to boost can you throw the keys to that to that door there Eti unaweza kutupa fungua kwenye ule mlango pale. Then you go to the mountain to pray that you need that door to open. Halafu uende mlimani ukaombe ili mlango ufunguke. It will never open. Hautafunguka. Because you are thrown the keys. Kwa sababu umetupa fungua. No matter how many you can fast rain comes comes dry season or cold season that door will remain the same. Yaani uende ukafunge masiku mengi uombe masika kiangazi. Yaani huo mlango hautafunguka. Except you get the key. Isipokuwa upate zile funguo. Na uchomeke pale kwenye kitasa. Na usungushe the door will open for yourself. Mlango utafunguka kwa ajili yako. So if you need anything from God. Kwa hiyo unapohitaji chochote kutoka kwa Mungu. There are keys to everything. Kuna funguo kwa ajili ya kila kitu. Why are Muslims so rich? Kwa nini waislamu ni matajiri? Even when they don't go to church but they are obligated to pay tithe and offer. Hata kama hawaendi kanisani wanawajibika kutoa zaka na sadaka. And God will never say because it is a Muslim paying then I can't bless him. Na Mungu hawezi kusema kwa sababu wao ni waislamu kwa sababu siwezi kuwabariki. Even in Egypt hata Misri they were some Egyptians kulikuwa na wa Misri who saw what Israel was doing. Walioona wa Israeli walikuwa wanafanya nini? They also killed the lamb. Na wao pia waliua kondoo. They also painted those who who indicated who are praying. They also painted on the doors. Na wale pia waliokuwa wameelimika walipaka damu kwenye miimu ya milango yao. Because they were told the revelation. They were given the revelation by their friends. Kwa sababu walipewa ufunuo na marafiki zao. 
And when the angel of death came, na malaika wa mauti alipopita, he didn't say no you are an Egyptian you are just trying to hide. Akasema wewe ni Misri unajaribu tu kujificha hapa. He met the qualification. Alikidhi vigezo. The angel bypassed him. Kwa hiyo malaika akavuka. When I see the blood I will pass over you. Ndio napo damu nitapita you yet. That's the key. Hallelujah. Wangapi wamebarikiwa. 